Hey everybody and welcome back to another Dueling Rabbits Productions video about drawloom weaving. Today I am demonstrating a nifty way to add small, non-symmetric motifs, which I call Easter eggs, to a piece woven on the shaft drawloom without single unit draw cords. Adding such details to an otherwise symmetric, repetitive piece can be a nice little surprise for the viewer and requires no permanent changes to the setup. It's cool. If you are unfamiliar with pattern shafts and how they're used to weave designs on the drawloom, it might be a good idea to watch my earlier video, Designing for the Pattern Shaft Drawloom, before digging in with me now. Those of you who follow the studio's Instagram feed know that I am currently working on a series of original, monumental damask designs I am calling Black and White Blockbusters, inspired by a tube of black 32 cotton and the family's favorite movies. I am weaving these pieces on my Ula Sirus drawloom using what has become one of my favorite setups a combination of single and repeated points with single draw cords for the left and right borders. Here's a diagram showing the organization of the leashes on the pattern shafts. The front of the loom is here. I have four repeated points across the center of the warp. This allows me to fill the greater part of the weaving with all over symmetric designs efficiently and relatively quickly. The two points on either side give me deep identical borders that I can design separately from the central panel. And the single draw cords within each point give me the flexibility to put whatever freeform patterns I want inside the borders. This is the setup I designed specifically for my Bethlehem series, for which I had a very clear vision before I even warped the loom. You can see how the central points give me two vertical axes, with points fore and aft, around which I can construct my symmetric scene. The larger elements in the scene, constructed with their centers on the points, repeat four times across the warp. Elements centered on the forward points appear in their entirety, and elements centered on the rearward points are split into halves at either edge. The threading for the borders with their single points and individual draw cords give me the option either to design the left and right sides of the piece identically or weave with total freedom, as I did with this lettering. In the central panel of this new piece woven on the same setup, the points are used in two different ways. The first way is as before. The four Christmas trees are all identical and symmetric because they each span one of the turning points. But if I work within the straight threading of the points, each leg between the turns contains 17 units, I can create non-symmetric figures, like the cats planning mischief here at the bottom. The cats are mirrored because of each pair's placement on either side of the forward points, but within those 17 units I can create any design I want. I decided to exploit this capability to its fullest for black and white blockbusters. Here's the first of those pieces off the loom. It's called It's a Marvel and depicts all our favorite actors in full Valhalla regalia. Tom Hiddleston, Chris Hemsworth, Rene Russo, Anthony Hopkins, and even Daniel Craig, although he didn't make it into the cinematic universe. Let's look more closely at Anthony Hopkins up here. This point here corresponds to the single white unit between the two staffs. The line of leashes continues down through the center of the ravens before finishing up to the left of the next figure. The ravens, designed across the forward points, are, of course, symmetric. But working in the 17 units between points enables me to add interest to the Odin depiction, allowing for his distinctive eye patch and regal stance with one arm akimbo. I am using the same strategy in the next piece, too, the subject of which I hope is self-evident. As with all the pieces on this warp, it's being woven wrong side up so that the whole thing looks like a film negative from where we sit. My four points are still the same, running across the central panel of the design. 
my individual figures are designed on the 17 units between the points as before. This allows me to add dimension to the hem of the evil emperor's cloak as he plots his next move against the brave fighters of the Republic. Darth Vader has only one lightsaber, of course, which I offset with his hand on his hip, striking a sinister pose. Luke Skywalker sports his signature kimono, and Han Solo's hair flops rakishly to one side. The smaller motifs between the figures are all constructed around the points and are therefore symmetric. Here's the symbol of the good guys, R2-D2, and the Imperial logo. But I want to call your attention to this little shape here. It is Darth Vader's interrogation device, with which he menaces Princess Leia in a way that made quite an impression on me when I first saw the movie as a kid. The device is not symmetric. It's got an antenna and a syringe and all sorts of other paraphernalia attached to it. I wanted to suggest this complexity in my design, but only had this area around the rear points in which to work. I needed to come up with a way to weave a non-symmetric motif without the bother of stringing single draw cords on all the units involved. Turns out, it's a pretty simple thing to do. All we need is a few spare pattern shafts or, failing that, any kind of stick that can be hooked to the draw cords that are already on the loom. What we do is create a few temporary pattern shafts hooked to existing draw cords so our pulls are still easy and intuitive. When we're finished with them, we remove the shafts and continue on our merry weaving way as if nothing unusual had ever occurred. I'll demonstrate using our ITO interrogator, as it is officially known, as an example. Here it is, all blown up. I've drawn an orange stripe down the middle to show where the vertical axis of symmetry is. Single unit at the back of the points is located on shaft 19. The rest of the motif is arrayed on shafts 15 through 18 towards the front of the loom. The first thing I did was label each of these shafts with painter's tape in order to avoid confusion down the road. Since the procedure requires extra shafts to be inserted between these, it is easy to lose track of where we are otherwise. Okay, back to our lift plan. I see that the first row is a symmetric one, centered on the single unit on shaft 19. I lift shafts 19 and 18 giving me three units on the lower edge of all four of my interrogators. When I cycle through my six treadles and weave six picks with these shafts raised, I will get warp dominant blocks six threads high and 18 threads wide, although the block at each edge is cut in two. There they are, the bottoms of all my interrogators. Back to the lift plan now. I see that the units for row 2 are arrayed on shafts 17, 18, and 19. So I lift those three shafts. But I can see that I have a problem. This right-hand unit on shaft 18 should be weaving with a weft effect face and therefore should not be lifted for this row. Time to head back to the pattern shafts to make the first of our changes. We are going to create a temporary pattern shaft 18 that contains only those units we want to appear as warp effect on the side of the cloth facing us at the loom. This temporary shaft will replace our existing shaft for as long as we need it. First, I lift shaft 18 because it makes it easier to work and see what I'm doing. When I weave my next row, I want to raise the units on the left side of each pair only, here, here, and here. They are going to be picked up with the new pattern shaft. I just take it up, upside down, to keep the hooks from catching, and feed it through the units I want to include thusly. Couldn't be easier. I flip the shaft right side up and lay it down on the supports in front of the old shaft 18. I drop shaft 18 back to neutral. From the back of the loom you can see the result. My old shaft 18 is unchanged and still has all its leashes on. 
but the new temporary shaft has only the leashes I want to include in row 2 of my interrogator. Next, I remove the draw cords from the old shaft and hook them onto the new temporary one. When I pull the handle for shaft 18, only the left hand units will be raised. It's clear when I raise the three shafts for row 2 that my non symmetric design has been achieved. Now I weave my six picks and the interrogator starts to take shape. Row 3. This row is symmetric, so I need everything back where it started. This is easy to accomplish. I scurry to the side of the loom, replace the draw cords on the old shaft 18, raise it up, flip the temporary shaft over so its hooks don't snag, and remove it from the setup. I lift up shaft 16, confirm that I'm good to go, and weave my six picks as though there'd been no interruption to the program. Row 4. Still symmetric. I raise shafts 16 through 19 and have at it. Row 5. Now I can see weirdness on shaft 15. The left hand unit of each pair needs to be raised while the right hand one does not. So I raise shaft 15, go to the back of the loom, and insert a new pattern shaft through the left hand leashes. I lower the shaft and move the draw cords to the new one. After I've woven my six picks, we can see the start of the antenna on the left side of the interrogator. Row 6. My new shaft 15 remains in place, but all the leashes on shaft 16 get dropped. I release that handle with no changes and weave six more picks. Row 7. Lots going on here. The new shaft 15 is still in play, but now shaft 16 and 17 need to be changed out, so only the right hand unit for each pair is raised. Back I go to the pattern shafts. I lift shaft 17 and pick up the units I need. I lower the shaft and switch the cords. Then I do the same with shaft 16. I weave my six picks and see that the top of my interrogator is beginning to look irregular and menacing indeed, just the way I want it to. Row 8. The only shafts I need for this are my new shafts 16 and 17. I drop the other shafts. I weave my six picks and my interrogator is finished. I love it to pieces and think it's kind of cute, even though it did give me nightmares as a kid. When I'm done, I return all the cords to their original shafts, remove the temporaries, and continue weaving. I wouldn't want to tackle this procedure for a large section, or make my lift plan too complicated. I think single draw cords are better for that. But for little surprises and Easter eggs, this is a simple, fast technique that can add a nice bit of interest to an otherwise symmetric design. I hope you'll try it and see.